will create America's own sovereign wealth fund to invest in great national endeavors for the benefit of all of the American people. Why don't we have a wealth fund? Other countries have wealth funds. We have nothing. We have nothing. We're going to have a sovereign wealth fund, or we can name it something different. I'll talk about it with Mr. Paulson, who's in the audience, and a lot of other friends of mine. And we'll name it something that's appropriate. Perhaps sovereign wealth fund wouldn't be appropriate, but it's going to be the same thing. We'll put tremendous amounts of money through all this money that will ta be taken in through tariffs and other intelligent things. And we'll have the greatest sovereign wealth fund of them all, and we should have. And that will be used to do things that will be great for our country, including to invest and wisely invest and build it up bigger and stronger and better than any place on Earth. We will build extraordinary national development projects and everything from highways to airports and to transportation, infrastructure, all of the future. We'll be able to invest in state-of-the-art manufacturing hubs, advanced defense capabilities, cutting-edge medical research, and help save billions of dollars in preventing disease Under the Trump administration, we proved that targeted tax cuts do not increase the deficit. They reduce the deficit by growing the economy and raising revenue. After we gave the massive tax cuts, we took in the following year with a much lower rate, billions and billions of dollars more than we did the previous year with a high rate. Think of that. So with a much lower rate, we took in more money because people were incentivized. Corporate tax revenues are 31 percent higher today than before my tax law was signed. With all of those cuts, 31 percent higher. To further support the revival of American manufacturing, my plan calls for expanded R&D tax credits, 100 percent bonus depreciation, expensing for new manufacturing investments, and a reduction in the corporate tax rate from 21 percent to 15 percent solely for companies that make their product in America. You have to make your product in America. If we lost the dollar as, a, as the world currency, I think that would be the equivalent of losing a war. That would make us a third world country, and we can't let it happen. So I use sanctions very powerfully against countries that deserve it, and then I take them off. Because look, you're losing Iran. You're losing Russia. China is out there trying to get their currency to be the dominant currency, as you know better than anybody. All of these things are happening. You're losing so many countries because there's so much conflict with all of these countries that you're going to lose that, and we can't lose that. So uh, I want to use sanctions as little as possible. One of the things that we have with tariffs is that I'll say to them, you don't honor the dollar as your world currency. Is that right? You're not going to do it? No, we're not. I said, that's okay. I'm going to put tariffs all over your product. And they're going to say, sir, we'd love to honor the dollar as the world currency. You know, tariffs, in addition to monetary and the money that we'll take in, which will be bigger than you've ever seen in this country before, gives you tremendous political power for something like that, as an example. I stopped wars with the threat of tariffs. that the suggestion of Elon Musk, who has given me his complete and total endorsement, that's nice, because he's a smart guy. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. It's very, very much appreciated. I will create a government efficiency commission task with conducting a complete financial and performance audit of the entire federal government and making recommendations for drastic reforms. We need to do it. Can't go on the way we are now. And Elon, because he's not very busy, has agreed to head that task force. Be interesting. If he has the time, that'd be a good one to do it. But he's agreed to do it. 
In 2022, fraud and improper payments alone cost taxpayers an estimated hundreds of billions of dollars. As the first order of business, this commission will develop an action plan to totally eliminate fraud and improper payments within six months. This will save trillions of dollars, trillions. It's massive. For the same service that you have right now, trillions of dollars is wasted and gone, and nobody knows where it went. Further taming inflation and bringing prices way down. I mean, you can speak for an hour and a half. So, 30 minutes. He did. Under the EPA's so-called power plant rule, more than 50 power plants have been shut down since she took office, and virtually all coal-fired power plants will be shuttered in the next couple of years, setting the stage for a catastrophic energy shortfall, which we already have, that will make inflation far worse than it has ever been. They want to close down our power plants, and we don't have power already to address this dire energy crisis that Kamala and Joe have created. I will immediately issue a national emergency declaration to achieve massive increase in domestic energy supply, which you're going to need. Electricity is desperately needed. With these sweeping authorities, we will blast through every bureaucratic hurdle to issue rapid approvals for new drilling, new pipelines, new refineries, new power plants, new electric plants, and reactors of all types. Prices will fall immediately in anticipation of this tremendous supply that we can create rather quickly and will be the leader instead of the laggard. We also cannot ignore the impact that the flood of 21 million illegal aliens has had on driving up housing costs. That's why my plan will ban mortgages for illegal aliens in California. They're passing a law where they're going to give, Calif we're going to give illegal aliens money to buy a house. But our soldiers, our veterans that are laying on the streets, they can't have them. We will eliminate regulations that drive up housing costs with the goal of cutting the cost of a new home in half. We think we can do that. The regulations alone cost 30 percent. Regulation costs 30 percent of a new home. And we will open up portions of federal land for large-scale housing construction. These zones will be ultra-low tax and ultra-low regulation. One of the great really small business job creation programs. It will be of all time. We're going to open up our country to building homes inexpensively so young people and other people can buy homes. You can't buy them anymore. Millions of Americans will take part in setting these safe and beautiful communities, reviving the frontier spirit. And really, as I said, reviving the American dream. It's about the American dream. It's all about the American dream.